because AOC is now saying also that Trump is racist for calling it the Chinese virus, which uh, one thing that I wanted to uh, bring up on this, I'll just bring this graphic up really quick. Um, it's just so you understand the context. This is the tweet that she was responding to where it's a New York Times article talking about different Asian Americans that have been uh, yelled at or attacked. And by attacked, they mean spit upon, which is still assault. I'm not trying to downgrade that at all. But I mean, it's not like people are just beating up Chinese people in the streets. But uh, this person tweeted out this article saying the predictable consequences of the president's rhetoric, it's rage inducing. And then, of course, AOC responded with her own tweet with this saying, yes, many who've never had to deal with the consequences of such rhetoric think objecting to the president's racism is about political correctness. Really, it's about protecting the millions of people who've become more vulnerable to hate crimes as a result of such language. So that's AOC's hot take on this. And one of the things that's just so incredibly ridiculous about this whole thing, first of all, I don't think that AOC understands her own woke vernacular here because Chinese is not a race. There is no such race as the Chinese. Chinese is a nationality. Now, the vast majority of Chinese, not all, but the vast majority of Chinese are Asian people, but so are Filipinos and Koreans and Japanese. Like, those people are all Asian as well. Actually, Indian. We don't usually think of them as quote-unquote Asian, but they're Asian as well. They're a little bit genetically different, but ultimately they're Asians as well. And so, first of all, she gets even the the very words they're wrong. Chinese is not a race. And so when president Trump calls the virus, the Chinese virus, well, that can't be a racist statement because it's not a race of people. It's a nationality. It could be nationalist maybe, but it's not racist. She is essentially faulting president Trump for random idiots doing stupid things. Now, ultimately, when it comes to the rhetoric, I actually think that it's important that we do remember that this thing not only came from China, but was caused by the Chinese government, not the Chinese people, the Chinese government. And when it comes down to this, uh, a bunch of random people attacking the Chinese doesn't even make sense, like I said, because first of all, Chinese isn't a race anyway. And if they were attacking those people, well, those people had nothing to do with the cover-up. And another thing that's really odd, too, if the people that are attacking the Chinese people, the immigrants, or, or whether they're here on visas, or whatever reason that they're in the United States for, that doesn't really make a lot of sense either. Like, if you're worried about the coronavirus, or you assume that just because somebody is Chinese that they have coronavirus... Attacking them is one of the dumbest things you can do because I don't know if these people have never hurt anyone before or been in a fight or something, but the point of the typically is to harm the other person. And normally what happens when that takes place is if it, if you are successful in that, then they start bleeding and the exchange of bodily fluids is the easiest way for the coronavirus. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. Maybe there are some people that are really scared of the coronavirus and have attacked Asian Americans because of that. But if they have, then it's one of the dumbest things that you can do because then you would get their bodily fluids on you, presumably, if you were successful in doing so, which would cause you to then contract <laughs> coronavirus. It doesn't make any sense. Maybe they've done that. I don't know. There's a lot of stupid people out there. But it doesn't even follow the normal rules of logic. And what I also don't understand about this with AOC is apparently these random morons that are attacking, you know, regular people of Chinese descent or Asian Americans that look Chinese. However, they're deciding this. I'm guessing that if they're racist, they're not real picky about it. She's blaming president Trump for that. But when they cited these different things, and in fact, when a reporter was talking to President Trump the other day saying, she's like, there have been about a dozen 
okay, a dozen incidents is bad. Definitely not a good thing. But a dozen incidents in a nation of 327 million? That's really not, you know, some kind of massive groundswell of anti-Chinese uh, nationalism or racism. That's just not, that, that's not indicative of a large movement. And second of all, do you really think that President Trump calling it the Chinese virus is the reason behind that? Because that doesn't make any sense either. Because A, the media and Town Hall actually put together a fantastic supercut of all this, different personalities in the media, everywhere from HuffPo to the Young Turks to CNN to MSNBC, referring to this thing as the Chinese virus or the Wuhan flu or whatever you want to call it. The Kung flu is personally my favorite uh, term for it, but they were calling it that beforehand and it was not racist. And if you want another double standard from AOC specifically, apparently these random idiots that have no presumable association with president Trump, maybe they were Trump voters, maybe not. We don't know. Those guys are responsible for these random, but minor acts of violence or assault against these Chinese immigrants. Some of them so minor that they're just being yelled at, which again, not cool, not okay to do, but still not assault. President Trump is responsible for that. But Bernie Sanders is not responsible for one of his campaign workers, somebody that was on Bernie Sanders' payroll for his campaign trying to assassinate about 10% of Congress because they were Republicans. You remember that at the softball game where the gunman opened fire and nearly killed Majority Whip Steve Scalise? That wasn't Bernie Sanders' fault. And you'll remember the day of, if you were listening to my program, I said on the air, that's not Bernie Sanders' fault. Well, I, did, I said that the day we found it out, not the day that it actually happened. But the day we found out that guy was a former Bernie Sanders campaign worker, I said, look, as much as I dislike Bernie Sanders, he is not to blame for this. The guy is to blame for this. So apparently it's not Bernie Sanders' fault when that happens, even though there was someone with a direct connection to him. But when these random idiots do so, somehow it's President Trump's fault, Trump's fault, despite the fact that he has no presumable connection with them at all. And even if they did, still wouldn't be Trump's fault. It's the fault of the person, not the fault of Bernie Sanders or Donald Trump or anybody, unless they're directly calling for acts of violence, which, of course, President Trump is not. Furthermore, it's not uncommon at all to refer to viruses by their point of origin. There's a few examples here, just a few. Spanish influenza, Zika virus, which is named after the Zika forest of Uganda, West Nile virus, Ebola, which, by the way, translates Black River in the original language. That's the reason that it's called Ebola is because it came from the Black River there in Africa. The Ross River virus of Australia, Black Typhus River from Bolivia, that's where we get uh, typhoid fever and typhus. Uh, Markberg virus, for, uh, sorry, Marburg virus from Marburg, Germany. That's another one. The Coxaxi, I believe I'm saying that right. Coxaxi virus from Coxaxi, New York. And another one that happened just recently, MERS. A lot of people don't realize this, but MERS stands for Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. So it's calling the MERS virus, which is actually a cousin of the coronavirus is calling it MERS racist because it happens to come from the Middle East? Well, no, and this isn't that either. It's very common for viruses to be named after their point of origin. In fact, that's probably the most common way to call it that. There are a few others, like uh, malaria, for example. That one comes from uh, a, an, an ancient language where malaria means bad air. So, yeah, that one's a little different. But as far as naming viruses or naming illnesses after the place where they come from, that's a pretty common practice. And even the media didn't think it was racist to refer to it as the Wuhan or the Chinese virus right up until the point Republicans started doing that. And then all of a sudden it was racist because to them, it's more important to score political points. And what is amazing to me with all this is in the middle of what the media correctly in my estimation, deems a worldwide pandemic and an emergency situation, they really want to have this argument at a time where they're complaining about how divisive Republicans are and how divisive our rhetoric is. They're really going to try to drive a wedge between people on account of this? 
they're really trying to score political points and make Trump seem as though he's a racist. When all this is going on, do we not have better things to worry about at the time? Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow sun of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances. <laughs>